Hello, today I'm going to be talking with you about the Trasena of Achpu. And the Trasena of Achpu is one that I find particularly interesting and intriguing, as it really ties in with the Popol Vuh, the sacred book of the Maya. The Popol Vuh was transcribed into the Latin alphabet during around about the 16th, 17th century. Um, and it was transcribed into the original Quichean, and then, of course, translated into Spanish or English as we see and read it today. And it is a story of creation. It is a story of gods and demons and monsters and myth and all of those kind of things, and possibly history and possibly astronomy is in there as well in the way that the story is told. Now, the story, I would say, you know, kind of like the main part of the story is really about the following of Hunachpu and Ishblam Gyech, the hero twins, in their journey through the underworld to resurrect the head of their father, Hun Hunachpu, uh, from its place in the tree in the underworld. And so what we see with this, or what we can be seen with this, is that these names follow through the calendar. We have just been through the cycle of Ish or Ishbalam. And then the Tresena of Kirch. So we have Ishbalam Kirch's name spelt out right there. And we are now about to go into the cycle of Hunachpu. So we have this period of time as Ishbalam Kirch and Hunachpu, those 39 days. And then we have spelt out the two names of the heroes. Now for me, this is kind of interesting because what we see with this Tresena is it is about the um, finding your hero's path. It is about finding the divine within yourself. Hunachpu being the light. Hunachpu being kind of like the solar lord, as it were. And so this is a large um, inference behind this particular Tresena. It's about facing your challenges, going through them, and coming out victorious, bringing the light back to the world. Um, it's very interesting where we see the Tresena ending up. You'll see that in a little while, of course. And so when we're looking at Hunachpu, when we're looking at the Tresena of Hunachpu, what we're looking at is overcoming our obstacles, proving our hero's journey, finding our spiritual path, finding our way through the darkness and back up through into the light. That's what it's all about. And so, yes, there may be challenges which come along the way, and some of those challenges may involve our descent into the underworld, as we'll see later on. But it's all about getting on the path. Okay? And so, of course, we're going to begin with the day of Hunachpu, one Achpu. Now, Achpu can be translated as, or literally as, blowgunner. And what we find in the Popol Vuh is that Hunachpu and Ishblam Kiech, the hero twins, spend a lot of their time using their blowguns, hunting. There is also an inference that Hunachpu or Achpu can represent the sun and it can represent the flower. And so these things, the sun, the brightest brilliance, the, you know, the, the, the ultimate light, is also associated with it. And this is, for me, about what we might find inside of ourselves. One Achpu we could see as the beginning of the hero's quest. The hero, the ultimate form, our highest possibility that we could become, that we could gain through our world, through our journey. That's what Hunachpu is about. Now, do we get to get there easily? No. We've got to go and face the challenges. We've got to start somewhere. And for me, Hunachpu, one Achpu, is the day of the beginning of the hero's journey, the day of the beginning of the spiritual path, or the reinitiation of it. And so maybe you feel like you've fallen off your path a bit. Maybe you've kind of like forgotten your way. Maybe you've forgotten that divine essence within you or your, you know, kind of like what you're here on earth to do, as the case may be. 
One Ach Po is a great day to remind ourselves of that, to get back on the path, to get back on the horse, as it were, um, to get back on our spiritual path. Because that's what the hero's journey is calling us to do. From One Ach Po, we're then going into two Imosh. Imosh representing the waters, Imosh representing the dream world. And here, seeing it with the number two, the number two which can represent duality. It's the light and the dark. It is the two polar opposites. Now, there are various things that can come out of this. Um, there are certainly things that if we were to look on it on, you know, maybe one layer, we could see Imosh as representing our connection to the collective. Which connection or which collective are we connecting to? Well, the number two can represent partnership. It can represent relationships. And so it could certainly be two Imosh as, you know, kind of like empathizing with your partner and this feeling of empathy, looking at kind of like what you're dreaming together within a relationship. That's one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it, which is perhaps a slightly scarier way of looking at to Imosh, would be uh, looking at it and saying, right, okay, there is the lightness of the dream and there is the darkness of the dream. It could see that, you know, kind of like, you know, which, which way is the dream that takes me to where I want to go and which way takes me into the nightmare, as it were. And so it may be apparent onto Imosh both of these things coming up at the same time. It's like, right, okay, which one do you want to choose? You want to choose that dream or you want to choose that dream? You want to choose the one that takes you somewhere where you actually desire to go or the other one that takes you somewhere where you don't? And the choice is yours. From two Imosh, we then go into three Iq. Now, three Iq is going to occur on the 30th of April in Guatemala, this will be the solar zenith transit, meaning that um, the sun will be directly overhead, 90 degrees at midday. And the last time that that would have happened would have been 3 eek on August 13th of 2022. So we see this 260 day period taking us from one solar zenith transit on August 13th to the next solar zenith transit on April 30th of the following Gregorian year. And this is a normal thing. This is a thing that happens in that way every year, pretty much. Um, it might change Gregorian date slightly because of the leap year coming in or something like that. But it's always going to be 260 days apart. This solar zenith transit was something which was very important because it marked the beginning of corn planting season. And you'll find that, you know, in Mayan architecture, you will find zenith tubes in some of their temples, which are long, well, long, relatively thin tubes because you have to have the diameter and the length in a particular proportion so that the sun will only illuminate the chamber at the bottom on the days of the solar zenith. And when that is achieved, we could see it in this kind of like metaphysical kind of way of the energy of Father Son impregnating Mother Earth. And of course, this is the days to get your, your uh, corn into the soil. So we see it falling this time on this day three, Iq. So Iq, the Nawal of the wind, the Nawal of communication. And... This is a strong Nawal. This is a, a Nawal which we're not entirely always sure which way it's going to come from, which way it's going to blow. Ik can often bring changes into our lives, sudden unexpected changes. Ik is going to change direction like the wind. And in fact, it's a change of direction of the wind, which is going to bring the rainy season to Guatemala right now, which is going to help to grow the corn. Ik can also represent our voice because it is the breath of life which rises from our lungs and is modeled by our throats in, into words and so it represents communication and here we see it with the number three now the number three can represent yes it can represent some challenges and some blockages but really it represents the home and it represents the inner place 
And so for me, three eek is all about your inner voice. So we're on this journey of Hunakpu. We're on this hero's journey. And three eek is asking us to listen to our inner voice. Where are we going to get our guidance in our journey? Where are we going to get our advice? And sometimes, you know, when we're on our personal hero's journey, there is no one around to be the cheerleader for us. We've got to be our own cheerleader. And it is our inner voice which gives us that ability to move forward, that gives us that, um, that drive to move forwards. So on this day three eek, as the sun illuminates and penetrates into Mother Earth, at least in Guatemala, is a day to listen to our inner voice and say, what are we choosing to move forwards to on our hero's journey? Which way are we going? Which route are we going to take? How are we going to achieve these things? From three eek, we then move into four akabal. Akabal being the dawn and the dusk, being the twilight, being the what is revealed from the darkness into the light. This is the concepts and the new conception. It is the new dawn. And here we see it with the number four. The number four, which can represent stability. The number four, which represents the material plane of existence. The four cardinal points. The material world in which we live. And so for me, four akabal is very much about getting our concepts, you know, kind of like we, even as I'm talking now, with this, um, you know, talking about this hero's journey and all of these kind of things, these are all quite, you know, high, well, say high level concepts and whatever. For Akabal is about, okay, how are we going to get them into the physical world? How are we going to ground it? Because four is very grounding, it's very down to earth. It's like, right, saying, okay, I've got some new concepts for who I'm going to be and where I'm going to go and how I'm going to do it and all that kind of thing. But how am I able to put them into the physical realm? How do I ground them? It can also be, you know, if we th see it as Akabal being first light, as it were. And the number four is kind of like, okay, the practical revelations that come at first light. So it's certainly a day, you know, if uh, you have the opportunity to get up and watch the sunrise, to ask how you are able to ground the ideals of your hero's journey into the physical world. How are you able to um, bring those concepts into practicality? From four Akabal, we will then go into five Cat. Now, we're on our hero's quest, this Tresena of Akpu. We've got to work out what it is that we need to take with us because there's some things that we can, we've can we gathered through our life and uh, that are going to be of use to us and some things which, well, no, maybe they were for the last hero's quest and they're not so relevant for this one. And that's what 5CAT can help us to do. It is a day to put our effort, to put our energy into searching through our net to see what it is worth hanging on to and what we need to let go of. This can be in each realm. It might be mental things, it might be physical things, it might be emotional things, it might be spiritual things. Sometimes the ideals that we've held on to as we've gone through our quest are things which are you know, always going to be of resonance through our life. But there may be some things also that we learnt several years ago which no longer help us. In fact, they might actually have turned into burdens. They might be the things which are holding us back. Now, to release them requires some energy because, you know, we've got to go searching through that bag. We can't just kind of like expect them to dissipate into nothingness, to evaporate. We've actually got to put our effort into it. And, you know, kind of like I always see cat as being this balance between freedom and security. And with cat, I can also see that, you know, it's about delving into our net. And this, in its nature, means that we've got to put our energy into it. The five cat really suggests that today is the day to put your energy into it. Now, we might see that as some form of, let's say, spring cleaning or something like that. 
working out what we want to hold on to in our homes, working out what we want to hold on to in our lives, working out what we want to hold on to in our work, being as it's a five day. But any of that will all take energy. And that's what we need to put into it. The more energy that we put into it, the freer we can be, the more thoroughly we can sort out our net and the greater space is left for what we may want to take with us on our hero's journey. So it's a great day for sorting things out. It's a great day for disentangling yourself from situations, from places, from people, from ideas that you can't take with you on this quest. So yes, it can be about letting go. And it can certainly be about making, you know, kind of like opening up your net, and making space for what you're going to take in, what you're going to gather on this hero's journey. From five cat, we then go into six can. Okay, can the Nawal of power and wisdom. Can the Nawal of teachers. Can the Nawal that connects us with the life force energy that flows through us. And here we see it with the number six. The number six representing the connection between the four directions and the heart of the sky and the heart of the earth. And so six can, a very balanced day. You know, can can be a powerful energy or can is a powerful energy. And sometimes that powerful energy, you know, can like seduce us. It can take us off our journey. Can as, you know, kind of like the love of power, which can come from it as well. It's something that we need to be aware of as we take on this quest. But we also need the wisdom. We need the t wisdom from our teachers. We need the wisdom from our elders. We need the, the wisdom that helps us on our quest, helps us de define where we're going and what we're doing on our quest. The six can also represent family. And so it may be wisdom that comes from our family that's here to help us on our quest. So we see there's all of these, let's say, um, external factors which are now helping us to move forward on our quest. But the one that I would choose to focus on is the ability to draw on heaven and earth, to draw on the divine masculine and the divine feminine, and to bring them into the physical realm. For me, 4Can is all about this wisdom, which may have come from like really up there, very, very bright, or from right, real earth wisdom that's come through to us, connecting the masculine and feminine together and bringing it out into the physical realm because it needs to be transmuted into the physical realm. We've got to put that wisdom into practice. But here we see it with this balance, with this highly stable number six. So this is really day about like, well, putting your teaching into practice for want of better words, putting it into, you know, drawing on the highest realms drawing on like the polarities above and below and bringing that into the physical realm in order to help you to move forwards on your journey. You're certainly going to need a degree of wisdom on your hero's journey to make the right choices. As we look through the Popovu, as we read through it, we find that you know the hero twins on their journey, they are faced with a bunch of different challenges, particularly by the Lords of Shibalba. And as they go through those challenges, they use their wisdom, they use their teaching, they use their insight, their connection to both their father, Hun Hun Akpu, and their mother, Ishqiq, to bring that wisdom into their physical plane of existence and overcome the challenges on their journey. And as we do that, we then go into the following day of seven Kameh. Now, here we see another name from the Popol Vuh. Kamei, one of the lords of death. Seven, seven Kamei, Wukub Kamei, is one of the kind of like chief lords of death. There are two, one Kamei and seven Kamei. Now, in the Popol Vuh, 
when the hero twins have their victory over Shibama. First, it is the victory over one Kamei, and then the victory over seven Kamei. The one and the seven being like the two bookends. And when you see the one and the seven, it means everything that is contained within. Seven Kamei is like, well, if you'll excuse the phrase, it's like meeting the level boss. It's like this is the last one that you've got to overcome. This is, you know, kind of like the season finale, as it were, you know, the big boss that you're going to kind of like come up against. And seven Kame is really like, you know, if we see seven as representing death and Kame as representing death, it's the death of death. It's the end of the fear. Now, how do we face it? Well, of course, there is going to be times when it might come into our world, but really to kind of like finish it off, we've got to follow it back into its lair. We've got to go to where that fear stems from. That is what we're going to overcome in our hero's journey. And for me, this is a very important part of it. This is where we, you know, we go into what we fear and then we tackle with it, we deal with it. How do we tackle it or deal with it? Well, that is going to be entirely up to us. We could look at it from the old paradigm of slaying the dragon and emerging with the dragon's head and the sword. That's one way of looking at it. Or we could go into the dragon's lair and we could work with the dragon. We could understand the dragon. We could come to an agreement with the dragon. And we could emerge victorious, riding the dragon, having conquered that fear, as it were, or allied with that fear to become stronger. Now, of course, it's up to us the way that we choose to do it. There's some that are definitely going to need to be conquered in one way and some which can be conquered in another way. But it would certainly suggest this is the time to finish something off. It's the time to finish off something that we fear and move forwards. Seven Kame, overcome it. It's done. It's time to move and to transform from that. Okay? Now, we're from seven Kame. Once we've transformed that fear, where do we go? We go to eight Kech. Now, eight Kech falls on another rather interesting day in that, according to archaeoastronomy, the day which the Celts would know as Beltane falls on 8 Kech this year. It falls on the 5th of May. Now, I know that a lot of people will consider Beltane, the day of Beltane, to be May Day, to be the 1st of May and that kind of thing. Well, that is, you know, within the Gregorian calendar. But Beltane itself is actually a day of archaeoastronomy, just the same as the solstices and the equinoxes. Now, we know that whilst people may approximate solstices and equinoxes to the 21st, 21st of March, 21st of June, 21st of September, 21st of December, it's often not the case that they actually fall exactly on those days. Often the uh, March equinox falls on 20th of March, the September equinox falls on 22nd or 23rd of September. And so we see that it's all about the way that our earth moves around the sun. And as such, the midpoint between the spring, or oh, sorry, March equinox, for all of you in the southern hemisphere, and the June solstice is not necessarily the 1st of May. It's often more around about the 4th or 5th of May. And this year, it falls on the 5th of May. And this year, it falls on eight kech. And I think those two things are very interesting to bring together. Because for me, and, you know, kind of like Beltane, this celebration of the beginning of summer is very much a fertility festival. It's very much about our connection with the natural world. And, you know, certainly in the past, I've been in Glastonbury on Beltane seeing hand fasting rituals taking place on the tour and all the trees are in flower. It's like nature is really displaying at that time of year. It's like everything is so vibrant and alive. And it falls on this day, Eit Kech, where we are celebrating our connection 
with the wilderness where we're celebrating the connection with nature. And so for me, in, you know, particularly, I suppose, outside of the tropical latitudes, because, you know, down in uh, like Guatemala, the rainy season has just started and the vibrance is coming back to the world. That's for sure. It's turning green again, having been brown and yellow for several months in the uh, other latitudes. This is, you know, a celebration in the beginning of summer and celebration of connection to nature. So eight kech, what is eight kech about? Well, the eight day is often the ceremonial day. And kech can be seen as a higher form of leadership, sometimes seen as the day of initiation of higher level, level elders or spiritual leaders. Eight kech is a particularly important day to celebrate our connection with the natural world. It's a particularly important day to celebrate our strength and the strength that comes to us from the natural world. Now, it's hardly a surprise that it falls in the Trasena of Hunachpu and that it falls after the day of Seven Kameh because this is where we go to. We go to face the final fear in Seven Kameh and as we emerge victorious, we are celebrating our connection with nature. We're celebrating the strength that we carry and we're being initiated into a higher level of leadership. And so these are themes for that day. And, you know, kind of like I would encourage everybody to go out and you know, obviously make as much ceremony as you can, as often as you can. But if there was a, you know, a particular day to celebrate, and to celebrate with fire, because Beltane is certainly a fire ceremony, I would suggest that this day of Eight Kech is the day on which to go do it and celebrate your connection with nature and the wilderness. It's also a day to celebrate your connection with the animal kingdom. And so as a result of this ceremony, as a result of this fire, you may also look for messages which come from the animal kingdom, which come from nature. From eight kech, we then move into another rather auspicious day. That day is nine anil. Nine anil representing the ripening of life itself. Anil representing yellowing. Anil representing the ripening of the maize. And the number nine representing the feminine or life. Okay, and so both of those elements... Anil being a highly auspicious day, the number nine being a highly auspicious number. Then you bring them together and we could imagine that nine Anil could really be a day of celebration, a very, very helpful and pleasant day indeed. And so what might we employ in our journey? I mean, this is kind of like, well, I kind of like see that the nine Anil could almost be rather like... Um, you know, the celebration that comes after the victory. It's like we are here to celebrate life. It sounds like a fantastic continuation of the Beltane weekend, as it were. Um, nine, representing femininity, representing independence as well. Connected with Anil, the yellowing, the ripening, the reward. You know, kind of like it is literally the prize that we are moving to as we complete our journey. And ninth and you know, a day of celebration, a day of celebration and giving thanks for all the ripeness, all the ripening that we receive in life. And so again, we could see it as a great day to make a ceremony, to give thanks for everything that we've received, the fruits of our labor. From ninth Anil, we then move into ten toch. And of course, this is saying to us, you know, we're going through this tracena of the hero's journey. We're going through this tracena where we have, you know, we've just slain the ultimate demon, been initiated as a higher level leader, received the bounty of life. But what's it all for? Are we just doing it for, you know, kind of like another badge on the sleeve or something like that? Well, Ten Toch is here to serve our community. Ten Toch is here to say, right, okay, this is where it's time to give back to the community. This is time to 
give a little offering, a little of what you've received through that hero's journey back to the community. And here is, of course, where, you know, hopefully on the screen right now, you're going to see up here the links for Odim and for the Popol Chai, a way in which we can all give back to the communities, which are the basis for where this understanding, where this wisdom, where, this, where this, these stories come from. And so it would be much appreciated if you can give back to the elders of Poptun, if you can give back a little to the people of San Pablo, that would be wonderful. You'll find the links in the description. So, ten toch, what are we going to do with it? The number ten, representing agreement, representing society, representing community. And toch, representing payment, offering. It's where you know we can go out and work within our community, work to make our community stronger, more harmonious, work to connect with our community. This is for me what I see, you know, kind of like that's the point of embracing this, let's say, hero energy, as it were, of, of making things better, to make a payment, to, you know, to share it out with our community. This would be a wonderful thing to be doing on Ten Toch, whether you're doing it through um, a donation to people that support your community or whether you're going out and getting your hands dirty yourself. This would be a great day to be doing it. From ten toch, we then move into eleven tzi. So tzi being the nawala of faith and loyalty and justice and law, um, also being the nawala of the vices and temptation. And this is kind of like, you know, we've seen it in the movies, haven't we? I mean, the movies are often based around the hero's journey anyway. And, you know, just as you think, Okay, you've gone through the whole winning process. Everything has kind of like worked out. We've, you know, we've, we're celebrating uh, our, you know, our victory and that kind of thing. And just at that moment, something sneaks in and says, but have you really won yet? Has it, has it really worked yet? And for me, this could be 11C. Because it's a high number. The number 11 we could see is coming from myth, many different directions. We're not sure which direction it's coming from. And if T was representing the vices, it's kind of like something coming out of left field and dangling a carrot, a, a vice carrot towards us. Have you really overcome it? Do you remember this? Do you remember how much you like it? Are you really on, the, are you really on your hero's path now or can you still be tempted off it? 11C may well bring that kind of situation in on that day. It's kind of like a proving field. Now, I see C very much as a guide and is, yes, very much about unconditional love and those kind of things as well. But when we have that 11, it is bringing in the unexpected. And so it's really kind of like saying kind of like, um, be prepared to be tempted in unexpected ways. And it's like, right, okay, how are you going to engage with that? How are you going to stay, you know, kind of like faithful to your hero's journey? How are you going to stay, you know, kind of like faithful to those you've pledged your loyalty to? 11C may well bring that up to be cleared or to be addressed. And so, you know, kind of be on the lookout for that. From 11C... We then move into 12 bats. So bats being the Noel of creativity, bats being the Noel of weaving. Here we see it with the number 12. And this is, well, you know, we've been on this hero's journey. It must be about time to write it all down, right? The number 12 being writing of the autobiography, bringing everything together in one place, all of your life experiences in order to create with the Noel bats. Now, bats, we often see in you know, the Mayan uh, art, we will see the monkey scribes. This is bats. This is kind of like, you know, kind of like engaging with the arts, whether it is writing or drawing or painting or however it might be. And here we see it with the 12. So if there was a day to, you know, kind of like write the, um, 
well, I was going to say synopsis, but certainly you know, write down what you've been doing throughout your hero's journey, the hero's journey that is your life, perhaps. Then 12 bats would be the day to put your creative essence into it, to use it to bring beauty to the world, to use it to inspire those around you. It's like, right, okay, I'm going to tell you my story. Here we go. This is, this is where I started, and I started out on this hero's path with this, you know, these high ideals, and I, then I found myself going into the underworld and facing my greatest fears, coming out the other side victorious, and I'm writing it down to encourage everybody else to go and follow their hero's quest. For me, this is 12 bats. This is that part of the hero's journey, that part of the Akhputra Sena. So if you have something to share, maybe 12 bats is a great day to be putting pen to paper or to be recording it like this or however it is that you choose to do it. How has your hero's journey gone? What do you wish to contribute? How do you wish to guide others? How do you wish to inspire others through your creativity? 12 bats might be a wonderful day to be putting that down and getting that out there. And then finally, where do we end up? We end up on 13 Ech. So Ech, the path, the journey. And the number 13, representing the ancestors or representing spirit. And so in some ways I can see 13 Ech as being the representation of the spiritual path. In some ways I can see it being the path or the journey which is guided by the ancestors. It is a fantastic day to be on a journey going somewhere to connect with spirit, going somewhere to connect with your ancestors. There is something about it where we could certainly see the ancestors playing, playing a part in that day, having a hand in our direction on that day. So keep your intuition, keep your senses open for ways in which the ancestors may be directing you on that day 13, ech, which turn to take, which way to go. 13 Ech can be a very, very powerful day, a day on which the journey that we take, if we're taking a physical journey, we may find that it has much more profound consequences than we were initially expecting when we, when we set out, as it were, because it is the day of the spiritual path. And so we may well find something connected with that on that day that we really weren't expecting. So... I would certainly say on 13 Ech, if you can, step out onto the path. If you can, go travel. If you can, go, you know, kind of like take a ride somewhere and go and find out what the ancestors have to show you on that journey. I think that would be a very appropriate way to spend that day and a very appropriate way to understand what's next on your hero's journey. So I hope that you've enjoyed that um, time about the Tresena of Achpu, and I look forward to seeing you in 13 days' time for the Tresena of Ach. Thank you.